What's up, divas and divas? So it's your girl. You guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Of course, I wasn't here last Wednesday to do Real Talk for you guys, so I apologize. I was on my way back home from New York City, back here. So I know you guys are seeing some differences, okay? It's the bedroom. Um, I know you guys see the differences in the bedroom. Um, I don't have, like, the pink colors anymore. I'm one of my lashes. I got to fix one of my lashes. Oh, I hate when that happens without the fix from my life. So let's just get to the the elephant in the room. So yeah, my room has changed. It's not colorful anymore, like the pink colors, which I will say I do miss. I do miss my bright, cheerful colors. But you know, it was more girly colors. And being that my husband is home now, he is here. We decided to you know get a new bedroom set. Um, the dressers that I had in here, I had them since New York, like forever. And they're really good wood. I repainted them but uh, and repurposed them. But they in my garage now for my daughter's room. Um, and, you know, I do miss the pink. But I love this bedroom set. Like, so I have done some things in here with my own DIY hands, okay? Getting some things that from the thrift store plus repurposed items that I already had in here that I got from the thrift store and repurposed. So I repurposed things like three times in this room, but I will definitely give you guys a room tour of that in my upcoming vlog that I need to edit. But yeah, we got a new bedroom set and I actually really do like it. Um, I love this color wood. Um, my furniture downstairs is this color wood. So we got a queen size set, like a queen size bed, new mattress, nice and comfortable a girl hasn't had a new mattress in so long but um really inexpensive set we went to american furniture warehouse and it's all real wood which i love um but i do like it a lot i love the drawers because you know i can put my, my underwear down there and stuff and it's just a really nice set and um well the tv is new but i bought it on black friday and i never took it out of the box um got it for a hundred dollars at walmart for um 40 inch so we put that up and yeah, I'll definitely give you guys a room tour. Um, I hope you guys like it. I am doing some, I've done a lot of different things in here. So yeah, you guys, I can't wait to show you guys, but um, yes. So we're going to get into this real talk. So you guys will probably like, what have I been doing? First of all, I've been doing shit, but trying to recuperate, clean my house, reorganize, you know what I'm saying? Show my husband around the town and make wigs, edit videos. I've been just doing the same thing. Um, and then some, you know what I'm saying? And then some went shopping while I was in New York and got me a couple things. I love Forever 21. Um, so I did get this. I love this outfit. Okay. First of all, it's from Forever 21. This jacket is so lit. Like, listen, my mom and my daughter, Nate was like, don't get that. But I love this. So it's the USPS. Um, postal service jacket and it got all kind of stuff on it like the jacket is cool this windbreaker jacket it's kind of like a crop top and <clears throat> i did get the sweatpants to match it they're white and it has i think it says express mail on the side but then i got these biking shorts that go with them too um these go with them too this says priority so i like this outfit like this is really cute so Yes, I'm loving this outfit, and then it's got a hood and stuff. Like, there's a hood. Okay, so really cute. I like this outfit. Plus, the pants, you can't even see through them. I don't think you can. Yeah, you can't even see through the pants, and they're comfortable. Okay, so I did get the pants in the plus size section in um, Forever 21. They're in size 0X, and the jacket I just got from the regular section. But so that's what I've been doing. I got to fix my lashes. I haven't worn makeup in like over a week. I'm going to do a couple of videos today for hair, so stay tuned for that. But other than that, I've been just chilling. We're going to get into this real talk real quick. So if you guys have a a real talk that you would like to send me, and you know, you want to dish it up, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the name of the people you're talking about in there, you can always tell me, like, April, hey, listen, I'm going to change the names because I don't want nobody knowing I'm talking about them. But if you don't, 99.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, I will change it for you, like Maury would, okay? So, on that note, let's get into this real talk, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. 
So I'm only going to do one because this one is actually long. And what's so crazy is I have old emails from 2014 when I was doing Real Talk. Um, well, you know, when I came back to doing Real Talk from this young lady. So, hey girl, or hey April girl, I do not want to... Okay, hey April girl, I did not want to disturb you this week with your hubby coming home. So I totally understand if we like don't hear from you for like a month with a laughing wink, okay? You can call me Candy. As you have before, yes, we have history, and I love you so much. So me and Candy got history, you know what I'm saying? Because I done already did a couple videos for her, so we got like a relationship here. You can call me Candy as you have before. Yes, we have a history, and I love you so much. You are awesome, and we have much in common. Hello. Anyway, brief history. So I was GNA. I don't know what GNA stands for. Uh, so I was GNA spend much money to fly. Maybe I'm not going to spend, maybe I was going to spend too much money. I don't know. Going, I don't know. Spend much money to fly to see this guy. I believe Christmas time, 2013 or 14. And I needed your advice and you was more right than ever. What does it say? I'm trying to figure out what this GNA means. So I was, so I was going to spend too much money to fly to see this guy. I believe Christmas too. On Christmas time around 2013 or 14 and I needed your advice and you was more right than either of us would have imagined by advising me against that trip he passed away like suddenly I was seeing on Facebook that he was losing weight and we had a serious combo the next day rest in peace messages were all over his page um, he was losing weight fast and we had a serious combo and the next day RIP messages was all over his page and I'm still lost then I needed your opinion because my second ex-husband molested my oldest daughter. And the day I found out, I had the master plan to kill him, roll him up in carpet, and toss him in the Delaware. I had the dudes and guns and access to do it, but God knew I needed my freedom because dude walked outside as I pulled up. He got it, but not death. He ran and he got some chick in Newark, New Jersey to hide him for three years. And when he came crying to me about his mom passing, I sent police to him and chick at the chick's place. I remember this one too. Him and I have had sons together, though who were young and I knew nothing and wanted to see him and, and did not want to see him. So I was stuck like, should I let him see the children for, for, um, for their own sake, not my ex-husband's? You can imagine your reaction. Well, he's married to some young chick that hit him, and she told him to stay away from me and his sons. But behind, but, but, but his behind does pay support, and oh, yes, I demand that life insurance policy be in effect. Him and her are both sick. They won't live long, so tick, tick, tick. I'm counting the days till he kicks the bucket, and my sons get 150000 each, and I have the policy to ensure it's paid. So now, try, um, so now, cry so long. So I have a career as a mental health technician at a child psychic center, psychic, psychiatrist, psychiatrist center. Awesome job. However, I do work part-time as a security supervisor, and I substitute once a week at my son's school because sometimes they need to see my face. Eight and a nine-year-old challenges, you know. So our security team are contracted at this company called McWayne Ductile. I was placed here to cover a sick employee who later passed away, and they just kept me in the position for four years now. I was getting paid more than regular officers because I was here on another type of job, which was more administrative than security. But I learned it mastered as it as we do. I learned it, mastered it, and as we do, and it first received and first received much gratitude from this company. Then the security supervisor left, and I took on the title. Girl, then I submitted a request for raises for the guards and laid out extra added duties they had all done and done well. I added education and time on job for each and figures of amounts that could be negotiated for each individual staff member. These officers claim they have never received raises and some have been there for over five years. I thought it was right to do the right thing. Next thing you know, some of these white folks at the company flipped the script on me, girl. Said security always messy. 
um, and we always messing up. Said we just need to open and shut the gate. Said I was not supposed to be in that position and they needed to put one of their company employees there quickly for union reasons. I was like, whatever. I saw where that was going. Here I am, a black woman with a BS degree and MS degree, working part-time contractor with this company and doing above and beyond what those low lives could ever could never do. And I use my rightful power as a supervisor and request raises. They could not stomach it. To them, it was like ending slavery for the South. So I was like, so what? I can go anywhere. I am contracted here. It's not my career. Security is everywhere. Then this trick administrator attempts to take one for the white team, okay? First, she tells me that I am, too st I am to stay on day shift, but move to the guard's house and push the button to open and close the gate. And the Caucasian employee will be hired for the position I was doing. I refused to stay. Then she says management told her I was a liability. Okay, I was like, what did this uneducating shipping administrator just say? I told her I was going to get back to her on that because I was trying to truly con um, um because I was truly kind of stunned in the way she walked her cheap wearing perfume smelling like hairspray and panties butt out of the skit. Whoa, okay, hold on. She said, um I told her I was going to get back to her on that because I was truly kind of stunned and she walked her cheap wearing Perfume smelling like hairspray and panties, but out of the scale house. So I spazzed on her professionally the next day, notified the employment opportunity company and the security company I worked for, and I am still waiting for a response. I remained at company as supervisor because I worked for the security company, and I realized it pains her and her little crew to see me contracted here still as a supervisor making $21 per hour and I don't do shit. She and her crew are so disgusted and I love it. However, I'm still waiting to hear from my company because I feel like she, um, she should not and will not get away with calling me a liability. April girl, that means embarrassment to the company. Oh yes, she tried it. So I was going to call so I was going to call the ethics hotline for her company, which will jump chain of commands. I'm risking being taken off of this site before I see her escorted out. And I am removed. And if I am removed, I cannot ensure that she gets in trouble. Should I do it? Try so um, Sorry so long. I love you. So basically, Candy has an issue at her job. You know, she has her own job, like a regular job, but she also is part-time contractor security at a company. She became supervisor when the actual supervisor left. She's been there for over four years. And now, you know, being that she has a supervisor title, she put in a request for, you know, raises for the staff, the security there, because they haven't gotten raises in over five years. Some people that have been there over five years have never gotten a raise. And so she laid out a map of all the things each employee has done for the company and how they went above and beyond, how they solved issues, and also said the amount of what a raise should be. So I think that's like really nice because she did that on her own time for one. Like some people don't even give a damn if you don't never get a raise. They ain't even trying to give you no raise. And there's some people who are just passive aggressive and they'll just go along with it. Um, but we got Kenzie here who is not only trying to go all out for her own self, but she's also trying to look out for her team members, her work colleagues, you know what I'm saying? Her work family. That's what's up. But now we got the other side where we got, and I'm not trying to be racist, okay, people who are non-black, so please don't think that this is a racial thing, but this is what was done to her, okay, because any race can do this, The Cauc or any hater, basically. The Caucasian lady and their team of Caucasians basically felt some type of way because they didn't come up with the strategies that Candy brought out and mapped out for why each employee should get a certain amount and raise, okay? They got mad. You ever notice when you do something, that one person that liked you all of this time, they see you went and bought, let's say, a new car. It might not even be brand spanking new, but the shit is new to you, okay? And you run out and you just bought you a brand new car. Then we got this other motherfucker over here 
who is your friend or so you thought and they mad hating because they don't got a car nor did they go out and buy a car and um they mad jealous and hateful because they didn't take that same step that you took okay so what do they do they throw dirt on your shit uh her car and all that uh that cheap ass car i would have bought something better Oh, please. She thinks she all that now because she got a car. This what this what they do. This what haters do, okay? They try to make a problem. They try to get everybody else on their side to agree with them so that way that the person who got the brand new motherfucking car feel like, oh, wow, my shit ain't all that. Okay, well, I'm going to just keep to myself. Basically, I ain't going to fuck with nobody. This is what you call haters who just come out of the woodworks because they mad because what you done did, they didn't do. So we got this group of Caucasian ladies, okay? We got the Caucasian group. And we got the black group. And not even black group. She's just a black woman by herself. She got all type of race ethnics behind her. She, you know what I'm saying? She didn't say the security was all black. They range from black, Hispanic, Chinese, whatever, white. They a range of colors. But the main leader of this pact over here is a black woman. And then we got the main leader of this pact over here is the Caucasian woman. And all her teammates is Caucasian like herself because... She doing some devilish shit, so they going to go right along with the shit. And I'm pretty sure a black person is not going to be up on her side trying to ban another black person. Or so I should hope they shouldn't, but, you know, there are terms and times when they do that, too. But anyway, we're not talking about no Uncle Tom. Okay. So we got Becky. We're going to call this bitch Becky, the white girl, who is feeling some type of way, talking about, oh, she shouldn't be able to ask for raises. She's not even contracted here. We're going to put somebody else on, on that booth. We're going to put somebody else on her on, on where she's sitting at right now. We're going to take her title from her. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't just go sit in the booth house and open and push the button, open and close the gate. We're going to make her job real motherfucking boring to where, boring to where she ain't going to want to be here no more. We're going we gonna to push her out the door, but she ain't going to know we're pushing her out the door. Like, she might know we're pushing her out the door, but we're not going to shove her ass out the door. We're just going to, like, kind of need, like, push her. We're going to try to lead her to the motherfucking door by doing dumb shit. By putting her in the booth house so she could just press the button to open and close the gate. That's that's going to be her only thing to do. It's just that she's a fucking gatekeeper, okay? A motherfucking gatekeeper now. That's all she do. In and out. You might have to show ID from time to time. But other than that, this bitch is going to be the gatekeeper. Candy ass going to be the gatekeeper. And Becky ass is going to be the motherfucking ruler. Because that's what the fuck she's trying to do. She's trying to rule the shit and make it look like Candy ain't got no say-so, no pull, no education, no mind of her motherfucking own. She basically want Candy to take her ass to the booth house and then from the booth house, get the fuck off the premises and go find her another fucking part-time security job elsewhere without her saying it to her. Because Becky's a bitch ass. So her way of being catty and fucking grimy is just to do dumb shit, which results in people's careers, which can also result in some shit where if you keep fucking with me and my money, bitch, Becky, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to slap fire out your ass. And I'm literally going to slap fire out your ass. Not the professional way, but the way where, you know what, April, you should not have fucking did that. You know you was at work. You know that shit is not professional. You know you was dead wrong for walking up to Becky and just smacking the shit out of her. That was not what you were supposed to do. Now they pressing charges against you. And you probably gonna not ever get a security job nowhere else because you just slapped this fucking white bitch till her face was red because she ran her motherfucking mouth and started some dumb shit with you because all because you black and she was hating. Now see, that's what you really don't want to do. But they get you like these Beckys will get you to the point where, yo, you know what? I'm I'm going to smack the shit out of this bitch when I see her, okay? And it don't even have to have nothing to do with her motherfucking race. It has to do with the catty bullshit that she is throwing out there. You feel me? Like, seriously, the catty fucking bullshit. Like, I'm not saying just white people are catty. Everybody's motherfucking catty in my eyes. Not everybody, but every race, Okay? Every fucking race is catty in my eyes, regardless of who the fuck you are related to. Bitch, you know you catty and petty, okay? I have come across enough catty and petty bitches. That's why I tell y'all I don't have no female friends. Because y'all be too, y'all be on y'all period 24-7, some of y'all. And like, I, me, a bitch like me can't handle that shit. Because I get real uptight and I get really angry when I get uptight. And then I start going the fuck off. And then I say some shit that's really mean. And I might 
have meant it at that time, but in reality, I just don't. But you so hurt by the shit, you just can't come back from it. So then what happens is we just don't ever be friends no more. And then I'll be like, oh, well, that bitch, fuck her too. So, you know, I try to be like on some humble shit. Like, let's just be friends. Oh, cordial. Not even friends, bitch. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. Just be respectable to one another. But Becky, she's not doing that shit. She's doing some sly shit. And so now Candy is basically like, should she report her? Um, what should she do? Um, she was going to um, go to Becky's company and call the ethics hotline for her company, which will jump chain of command. I'm risking taking off of the site before I see her escorted out. Um, should you tell on her? You know, whatever it is you want to do is basically that you'd want to tell on her. Let me tell you something. You don't have to always seek revenge on people. Like to me, for you to go and tell on her is just basically like, oh, well, if you do this to me, I'm going to do this to you. So if you do this to me, Becky, me, Candy, I'm going to do this to you. It's like some kitty bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's called karma. Bitch, it's called motherfucking karma. It goes the fuck around. Sometimes that shit will come back around two, three times to your motherfucking monkey ass if you really doing some foul shit, okay? So whatever it is you want to do to her because I kind of got conflicted, confused with the shit, you know what I'm saying? Basically, you only want to do it because you feel like she done did some shit to you by calling you a, li a liability, you know what I'm saying? Fuck that bitch. She called you a liability. That means that you, you, you stronger than her and she knows she a punk bitch and she can't handle you. That's her way of saying, bitch, I'm scared of fucking candy. I'm a bitch, I'm I'm a bitch. I'm scared of candy. That's that's her way of saying she's a punk bitch by calling you a liability. You know, don't feel bad about being called a liability because I've been called that shit my damn self as well. By a job, by people. Okay, so don't don't take it too personal because people could come out their mouths and say the dumbest fuck shit sometimes. Like people say some dumb shit. And it's unfortunate that a lot of times these Beckys, they use that shit like, oh, you a liability. Bitch, what the fuck is a liability, okay? Because as far as I'm concerned, your bitch is a liability. Because if you keep running your motherfucking mouth, I'm liable to go off on you. You a liability. People use words sometimes, and that shit don't even pertain to you or what the fuck you stand for. Just like with your job shit. You're a liability because what you're kicking out knowledge and you're trying to help those around you just progress and get and move forward. While this bitch want everybody to be stagnant and sit the fuck back, but her Becky ass gets set for. Let me tell you something. There's nothing you have to do to Becky to make her feel any type of remorse. She's gonna get hers regardless. All you need to worry about is Candy and how Candy's going to move forward and what Candy's going to fucking do to better herself. Fuck this bitch, Becky. You know what I'm saying? White bitches sometimes act like that. Black bitches do too. I can't stand a female who always want to do some sneak shit just because you can't do that shit in my face. Like, I don't give a fuck what it is. Work related, you know what I'm saying? YouTube related, whatever the fuck it is. I don't like for people to do shit behind my back. Even talk about me. If you got some shit to say, Say that shit to my face. If you want to do some foul shit to me, don't go behind my back and do the shit like post shit up on fucking social media or whatever. Do that shit to my face, bitch. Put put that shit in my face before you fucking screenshot the shit and send it to Instagram and shit like that. Like, that's the shit I be talking about. You know what I'm saying? Shit always comes to the light, for real. You don't need to do anything to her because she did something to you. Because when you do shit like that, it's called revenge. It's tick for tat. It's childish. And when you do shit like that, watch what happens. You don't get your blessings like you want to because you done did some foul shit. And even though it might be some right shit and it might be the right thing to do or the, like I said, shit comes to light. And regardless of what, Becky knows she's doing dirty. Becky knows what she's doing is some foul shit. And what's going to happen to Becky? You don't have to point her out, but somebody else will do it. And then not only will somebody else do it, but it will come to the light and the job will notice what type of person this bitch really is. So don't go doing tick for tat shit, you know what I'm saying, for her. Stop worrying about her. As long as she don't disrespect you up in your face, then you know what? That's a coward, bitch. If she want to tell a person or someone that you work with that you acting like this or you doing this or you a liability and you're this and you're that, let her say what the fuck she want to say. Because this is work. Sometimes people, 
need to realize the work is work. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with work, but sometimes people take that shit a little bit too personal. Like, okay, yeah, don't fuck with my money because I need that shit. And I would really prefer for you not to fuck with my money because if you fuck with my money, then you fuck it with me. And if you fuck with me, then you fuck with my family. And we can't have that. Okay, but what we're not going to do here at work is we're not going to run around here la di da da like a bunch of three and four year olds around the merry go round acting like everything's all cool. And then once we get back out the sandbox, bitch, you running your motherfucking mouth like you don't even know who the fuck you're talking about. This the type of shit I'm talking about. Okay, this the type of shit I be talking about. So, with that being said, we don't have to take so much personal shit from work. It's work. It's all about making that dollar, but don't feed into the shit. I noticed that a lot of times people will get into a lot of beef at work. Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I've had beefs. You know, one of my good friends, we were good friends before um, I even started working for Fidelis. And, you know, she was the one who helped me get some health insurance. And we became really friends. good friends. I started working at the health clinic, but not with fidelis health insurance i was working as a pharmacist rep at a health clinic in new york so my time was up for that job it was only like temporary and the young lady alice who worked for fidelis who we became friends with she brought my resume in and they hired me like probably like a week later you know and i got really good pay and we worked we didn't work alongside one another only for the training and um Years went down, you know, I became senior VP for marketing, and then she became a supervisor for, like, the whole team of us. So it was, like, um, let's just say for her region it was 10 people, and I was a senior VP for the marketing team, but she was a supervisor over me. Well, anyway, she had 10 of us. Not all of us was marketing. I was only senior because I've been there for the longest, 11 years. Well, anyway, so I got to choose what I wanted to do and what other people got to do. I'll just run your ass ragged. So anyway, um, because me and her were still best friends, she felt that I could be like her little spy and spy on the other people that was on our, on the team. You know what I'm saying? And we didn't have to stay in the office. We worked and we went around wherever we wanted to go. So she basically wanted me to be a fucking snitch and tell her what people are doing throughout the day. Are they really motherfucking telling or doing their job? So I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not about to be a snitch. We was in the office talking, right? And so she goes, well, if you don't do it for me, then I'm going to suspect that you don't be working all day. You know, I, I got in her face in this, this office. It wasn't her office. It was like a room that we could just go once we have clients come in. I got in her face. And I was like, first of all, don't sit here trying to blackmail me because I'll take your ass right in the office where the big boss is at and let them know what the hell you had me just um, come in here and say to you. I said, don't ever disrespect me. I don't know who the fuck you think. You I, I just went off on her. I started telling her I was going to fuck her up and shit. And then next thing you know, <laughs> my pupils was all red. Like I had busted vein vessels in my pupils. They just turned red. I guess I was that angry. And I walked off. Do you know this bitch went and told the freaking big, big, big boss that I threatened her? Why did I threaten you? Okay, yes. Maybe I should have told her I was going to fuck her up. But you cannot expect me to be no snitch. Okay, because we friends. We don't do that. So, of course, I did tell what she said to me. That's when I, I became the snitch. You know what I'm saying? I let the big boss know. Well, I did tell her that because she was in near black trying to blackmail me, telling me, oh, I can go and spy on such and such co-workers for her. I'm not about to be no snitch. I was snitching right then and there. But, you know, so this is, this is the beef that I've had at work. And I probably had other beefs, too, that I just can't remember. Oh, yeah, I did. I've had a couple when I used to work at Family Dollar, but with, with my boss. But it's like this. I'm not, I mean, it's my money. I'm going to take it serious. But I'm not about to let you fucking irritate me and get me so mad to where I'm going to go be childish and be tick for tatting. 
You know what I'm saying? Let Becky be Becky because that's what the fuck she do best is be motherfucking Becky. And you, Candy, be Candy. Don't do no shit to her because she's done shit to you because all the shit in the dirt that she's trying to do to you is not going to pan out for her. I guarantee you. What's going to happen is she's going to bring all her bullshit into the light. So just take it from me. Don't even stoop to her level. Just be you and do what you are supposed to do. Okay? So I said I was only going to do one, but I'm actually do two. Okay? Real Talk Wednesday. Tired of my bestie. Hey, April. I have already changed the names, and I hope this does not get long. I have been friends with my best friend since middle school. She has always had ways that I don't care for, but hey, don't everyone? Lately, she has been really getting on my nerves. Right now, we are not talking because she's acting like we are back in middle school. So we are late 20s. So we are late 20s with kids. Me and Toya are BFFs. I also have another friend from middle school. Not as a best friend, though, but we are friends. Naturally, the weekends are the only times we are all free. Toya, for some unknown reason, has a problem with my friend Amber. The first occasion occurred, me and Toya decided to take our kids bowling. Amber asked what I was up to that day, and I told her bowling, and she was more than welcome to bring her son. It's a public place, and my bestie can't dictate who can come somewhere. She instantly got Amber, um, she instantly got mad, and when I told her that Amber may come, we all ended up having a good time anyway. So she instantly got mad when I told her that Amber may come along, but we all ended up having a good time. So a couple of weekends ago, we were meeting up at a bar along with some of Toya's other friends, okay, which is my best friend. I invited Amber because she was bored and for, one, for once had a babysitter. Toya flipped out and said she wasn't going anymore and to have fun without her. I have asked Toya why she doesn't like Amber and she said she doesn't have a reason and that she gets on her nerves sitting over there being quiet all the time. Amber asked me, did Toya dislike her? And I just honestly told her yes. And now she knows how to proceed. We didn't talk about it anymore. And I haven't spoke with my best friend, Toya. I never say anything to Toya about her other friends. And I can't tell her who she can invite to a public place. I will never invite Amber to her house or anything since she has a problem with her. But I don't see a problem with trying to spend time with two of my close friends and our kids at the same time out in public. Was I out of line or is Toya childish? Oh, yeah. And we have actually did go out and have fun. And Toya ended up hanging out with her other friends that night. So basically, hmm. She changed the names, but I can't remember what she changed the names to. So basically, right before we get into it. Okay, so Toya is the best. Okay, so basically, I don't, I don't think she gave herself a name. So we're going to just call her Nikki. Um, so Nikki has a best friend, which is Toya. They've been best friends since middle school. Now they're in their mid twenties. They each got kids. They've been besties. Okay. But Nicole also, Nikki also has a mutual friend from school, from middle school. They're not besties, but she's still a friend. That young lady is also the same age, got a kid too. So Toya and Nikki are besties. And then we got Amber, who's just like a casual friend. But Toya don't basically want nobody around. She catch an attitude. First of all, we grown. Now you got Toya, Nikki's bestie, who be inviting her friends. Nikki don't say nothing about it. But Toya got a problem with her inviting Amber because Amber's what? Quiet? First of all, let me tell you something. That's not a reason why to dislike someone because they're quiet, okay? Maybe you might feel some type of way. I mean, I get it. If we all converse and we having a good time and you sitting there quietly, like, I would might, I probably would might think something like, what the fuck is her problem? But then again, it's like maybe there isn't anything. She might just be introverted. She might just be shy. You cannot really judge somebody on being quiet. Okay, because when I get around a crowd of people, I don't really have much to say. And that's because I'm introverted. I don't really like to be around a bunch of people. So I get into a shell. Maybe that's the same way this young lady Amber is, but she still doesn't want to sit at home. Anyway, the bottom line to it is this. 
Latoya cannot get man uptight. Is it child? This is really childish because when you're in your 20s, you should not be acting like, well, I don't like her around you, so I don't want her. You're my bestie and you can't hang out with nobody else. Like, listen, we are not little kids. We grown ass women. That's sometimes having more than two people hanging out is a little bit more fun, I would think. You know, sometimes you know, personalities may clash. And I think like hanging out, girls hanging out just like two or three and four, like, you know, a little bit more than two, like maybe like three and four. I think that's cool because you can see the laughter in everyone. There's four different personalities or there's three different personalities. Everybody brings something to the table. Everybody brings some type of excitement and, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of cool, but Toya does not, Toya's not feeling the way I'm feeling about the shit. Like she don't want Amber to come around. She don't want any of freaking Nikki's friends to come around when they hanging out. So what I'm seeing in Toya is she's a possessive friend, but she's not doing it in the right way. Like she's allowing you, she's allowing herself to bring other people into the friendship. But you, Nikki, you can't have no friends. You can't bring no friends in to hang out. Let me say this much. That means you need to find yourself a new friend to hang out with. I understand that's your best friend. You did say she was getting on your nerves. You haven't spoken to her. Sometimes we grow out of people. We grow out of friendships. And that's okay because that's a part of life. Not saying that this girl is supposed to be your best friend for the rest of your life. But the ones that are your best friends, we do try to keep them close to us. But as a best friend and as someone that cares about her, I would find it very interesting if you would have a talk with her and let me know what happened with that conversation because you cannot just walk away from the friendship this young lady has feelings for you you're her friends and she finds you to be close to her heart so therefore she may get a little bit jealous i ain't even gonna front let me tell you something my friend robin love kisses 99 she had her friend that lived in Jersey with her, and I lived in New York at the time. And I forget this girl's name, but anyway, they had they weren't friends for a minute, and then they became friends again, and then they would start speaking, and then they would be friends again. Um, so I was happy when they weren't friends because I would just feel some type of way like that's my bestie, and I don't want nobody talking to her. I would get type of jealous, but I would never say anything. And then they would go like to Wendy Williams show and do shit. What was her name? Something mom was her name. And but she would say slick shit to Robin that Robin would tell me about. And it would just anger me. Like, you shouldn't even be her friend. You shouldn't even be her friend. You're my best friend. But I would never say this to her. But I can understand how Toya might feel. She might feel a little bit of jealousy. And then she doesn't see that on her end when she brings friends around. It doesn't bother you. So I would definitely want to have a talk with her because it might not be that she's just being childish and like, you know what I'm saying, immature. It might have to do with how her, her actual feelings for you. And sometimes adults don't even know how to show their feelings. Sometimes they don't know how to express themselves. So they start doing dumb things. And she might be just trying to push her away and out the picture because she just wants time with you. And that's fine, you know. But if you only want time with that one individual person, then there's ways to go about that. There's ways to say, like, listen, it's not that I don't like Amber, but I would really just prefer it to be just me and you. I just want to spend time with you. And maybe if she would have came across as saying such, then the situation wouldn't have resulted in nobody speaking to each other or like, I ain't going. You know what I'm saying? It would have been a little bit more mature. But sometimes we don't think like that. We just go off of our first instincts and our feelings and then shit pops off in the fan and then it's like, okay great now what so the things that you may see in this friendship nikki i may not see but i also do see that yeah she is acting a little immature about the situation but i guarantee you it's probably because she doesn't want to share her friends with anyone else and i can totally understand that because that's how i felt as well but there are different ways to go about it but it's also not fair to you to not be able to invite friends other friends into the relationship of hanging out when she can do so. It's just all around the border kind of fucked up. You know, she's being selfish, but also she's wanting to do what you want to do, which is have friends hanging out. Let me tell you something. Like I just told y'all motherfuckers, women are catty and really grimy and just like a bunch of catty, catty, catty pussy cats. Like seriously, sometimes they do shit to show affection and it just be like, girl, you're not even doing that the right way. Like, 
if you love me, just be real about the shit. Don't, don't act like that. I don't know. That's just me. I just feel like Toya is probably feeling some type of way. Like that's her friend and she wants to give all her attention to only her friend without any other interruptions. And that's understandable. You know what I'm saying? When you have a best friend and you really care for them, you you do get like jealous. You know what I'm saying? You do feel some type of way. And that's how I used to feel. Well, I used to hate hearing her talk about. I used to hate um hearing Robin talking about um Jana's mom, whatever the fuck her name is. I didn't like that lady, that that fucking bitch for shit. Only because that was my best friend. But you know, you gotta mature, and I'm mature and past that. You know, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think you should walk away from the friendship. I really do think, like, you know what I'm saying? Give her some, give her a chance to explain herself while you explain yourself at the same time. And see what her main deal is. Might just be a little jealousy. She might just want you all to herself. I don't know. She might want you all to herself for some other type of reasons, too. I can't say. But, you know what I'm saying? I don't mess with you. But just give her an opportunity to explain herself before you walk away from the friendship. And let her know, listen, if you just want to spend time with me, girl, I'm here for it. Just tell me. That's all you got to do. Mm-hmm. But, you guys, I'm going to go. got to go get my girl mom Z and take this wig off and stuff so I can do videos. But I love you guys. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. And I'll see you guys in the soon-to-come videos. Uh, 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 uh.